One of the most horrific things that could ever happen is the biblical end of the world. And in this movie, it slowly begins in the year 1979. A priest in the Vatican sees a comet in the sky and immediately grabs a scroll that contains information about that comet. It's called the Eye of God, foreshadowing the birth of a girl who will be the mother of Satan's child. The priest immediately notifies the Pope about the comet, and the Pope gives an order to find and protect the girl. However, one cardinal, a leader of the Vatican Knights, thinks they need to kill her. But the Pope disagrees with him, saying that's an evil thing to do. At the same time, a girl is born in New York, and a midwife takes her away from her mother, saying she needs to wash her. However, the midwife takes the child to a morgue, where the followers of Satan are waiting. The satanic head priest sees the devil's mark on the baby and performs a ritual in which he kills the snake and gives its blood to the baby. The midwife returns the baby to her mother and asks if she has come up with a name, and the mother says that her baby's name will be Christine. Twenty years later, in 1999, just three days before the new year, Satan arrives from the depths of hell to the streets of New York and possesses an investment banker. He immediately starts wreaking havoc by blowing up a restaurant. Then we meet our protagonist, Jericho Crane, a former police detective. He suffers from depression because his wife and daughter were killed. Now he works at a private security company and blames God for his plight. His best friend and colleague, Bobby, arrives and informs him they have a job to do and need to protect someone. And that person is none other than that possessed banker. Their job is going smoothly until the banker, or Satan, gets out of the car and someone starts shooting. Jericho saves him and gets shot. But luckily, he has a bulletproof vest. Bobby tells him the shooter escaped to the roof of the building and Jericho gets on a chopper to catch him. Soon, Jericho sees the shooter running towards the roof end. However, Jericho manages to catch him. They both end up on the ground, and Jericho continues chasing the man until he finally manages to catch up with him in a subway tunnel. Jericho tells the man to drop the gun, but the man only says that Jericho made a grave mistake and starts rambling about the end of the world. He points his gun at Jericho, who immediately shoots him in the legs. NYPD arrives, and Detective Marge tells Jericho and Bobby that the shooter is a priest named Aquinas. She also points out that he doesn't have a tongue, which confuses Jericho, because he clearly heard him speaking. Jericho and Bobby soon find Aquinas's address, and they investigate his apartment, where they see his tongue in a jar, messages and symbols written in blood on the walls, and a picture of an unknown girl. Then we switch to Christine, who is now 20. She visits her mother's grave and heads to the subway, where an unknown man approaches and informs her that Satan is coming for her. She pushes him away, and he breaks apart. As Christine screams in terror, she realizes it's just an illusion. She arrives home, and we find out that the midwife from the hospital is her stepmother. Christine tells her about her vision in the subway and calls her doctor, who is no other than the satanic head priest. He tells her to take some Xanax and rest. Jericho visits a church where Aquinas served, and he questions his father, Kovac, who tells him that Aquinas was taught by the Vatican. He mentions a girl and that something will happen in a few days. Jericho doesn't understand him and leaves without any helpful information. The next day, Satan goes to a hospital where Aquinas is. He manages to get through because a policeman who guards Aquinas is his worshiper. Later, Jericho, Bobby, and Marge go to interrogate Aquinas, only to find him crucified on the ceiling. They examine his body and see the message carved into his flesh, which says, Christ in York. Jericho and Bobby figure out that whoever wrote the message meant Christine York, and the two search for her and find her address. At that time, Christine goes to take a shower when she finds her dead father. Suddenly, a group of Vatican Knights show up. They manage to overpower her, and one man pulls out a dagger while praying to God. However, Jericho and Bobby arrive just in time to save Christine. The attackers escape, but Jericho manages to grab a necklace from one of them. He recognizes that the necklace represents the Immaculate Heart. The police and Christine's mother arrive, and Jericho heads out. But before he leaves the house, he takes a book about the Vatican. Christine's stepmother calls the head priest and tells him what happened. 
He informs Satan who will kill him and says he will find Christine alone. In the van, Jericho finds the immaculate heart symbol in the book and figures out that the Vatican Knights attacked Christine. He goes back to Christine's house and informs her about the attackers. Then, the both of them share a gross vision by seeing bodies on the slice of an apple. Satan arrives and starts a fire that kills Bobby. The stepmother attacks Jericho and Christine, but they manage to overpower her and escape just as Satan enters the house. The duo then stumbles upon Marge and another police officer. They reveal to Jericho that they are both Satanists and demand that he hands Christine over. However, Jericho refuses and tricks them by pulling guns from his sleeves. The duo escapes. Satan arrives and finds the dead bodies of his followers. He revives Marge and orders her to find Jericho. Now the duo is hunted by the Vatican Knights, Satanists, and the police. The duo takes a break, and Jericho finds out that Christine had recurring dreams about sleeping with Satan. Jericho takes her to Father Kovac. He tells Jericho and Christine that Satan must impregnate her by midnight on New Year's Eve, which is tomorrow, to usher in the end of days. He offers Christine protection, and she accepts. However, Jericho disagrees with that decision, because he thinks they can't protect her from Satan like he can, and asks her to come with him. Christine refuses, and Jericho leaves the church. He goes to his apartment, where Satan is waiting for him. Satan offers Jericho a deal to tell him where Christine is, and in return, he will give him back his wife and dagger. Jericho refuses the deal, since he knows that it wouldn't be real. This angers Satan, and he shows Jericho how his family died. Jericho shoots at him, but quickly realizes that he is immune to bullets. Satan throws him through a window, and Jericho almost falls to death. While he is clinging to life, Satan offers him one more chance for the exchange which Jericho accepts. Satan gives him a hand, and suddenly, Jericho throws him out the window. He gets up, all beat up, and hears knocking on the front door. He opens it, thinking that the devil is there. But to his surprise, it's Bobby. Unsure if it's really his friend, Jericho shoots him to see if he can bleed. To Jericho's relief, he can. The two of them head to get Christine out of the church. Jericho and Bobby arrive at the church and stop the cardinal and his knights from killing Christine. Satan reappears and kills the Vatican clergy. Jericho and Christine escape. However, Satanists quickly surround them. Bobby arrives and Jericho tells Christine to get in Bobby's car. And after she enters, Bobby drives away, leaving Jericho alone. Satanists beat Jericho heavily. And when Satan arrives, he orders his followers to tie Jericho to a cross and let him slowly die from bleeding out. The next day, Father Kovac saves Jericho and treats his wounds. Jericho wakes up, and when he sees that it's 9 p.m., he goes to his workplace, where he reloads his weapons and locates Bobby's car. Once he finds the car, he goes to infiltrate the Satanist's hideout, where the impregnation ritual is about to begin. Marge recognizes Jericho, and he shoots her. Christine sees him and immediately goes to him. Jericho starts bluffing that he will kill Christine if anyone moves. Bobby arrives, and Satan orders him to kill his friend. Bobby reveals to Jericho that he sold his soul to Satan to save him from burning to death. However, he manages to find the strength to refuse Satan's order. Disappointed, Satan breaks their deal, and Bobby burns to death. Jericho starts blasting, and he quickly escapes with Christine. They end up in a subway tunnel and almost get run over by a train. The train driver stops the train, and the duo gets on it. Jericho orders the driver to drive away, and they see Satan standing on the railway. They run him over, but he survives and kills the driver. Jericho then separates the wagons and jumps to the wagon where Christine is. Satan jumps from the second wagon, but Jericho blasts him together with the wagon. The two of them exit the subway, and at the same time, Satan leaves the banker's body and follows them. The duo gets into a church, and Jericho orders everyone to leave. He and Christine are now alone, and it's almost midnight. Jericho tells Christine to hide. He takes a moment to stand before the altar and asks God for strength and forgiveness. Suddenly, Satan arrives in his ghostly body and wreaks havoc in the church. He then shows his true form to Jericho, who is standing bravely in front of the Prince of Darkness. Satan attacks him, 
and tries to possess his body. Jericho tries his best to resist. He falls to the ground, briefly losing consciousness. Christine comes out of hiding, thinking that Jericho managed to beat Satan, but she immediately finds out that Satan possessed Jericho's body. He grabs Christine and heads to the altar to impregnate her. Satan starts ripping Christine's clothes off while she begs Jericho to fight for his body. As Satan leans to kiss Christine, Jericho manages to regain control of his body and jump on an angel statue's sword. At that exact moment, a clock strikes midnight, and Satan, who is now defeated, leaves Jericho's body. Jericho sees his wife and daughter waiting for him in the afterlife and dies peacefully. Christine tearfully embraces him as the world celebrates a new millennium. If you enjoyed this movie recap, make sure to hit the like button. And if you want to see more of these, subscribe to the channel and check out our other videos.